All right, this section, or section 62 and 63, I'll talk about the shape the parallelogram. We start with this um, shape within a family tree that we're going to talk about, so we'll eventually add to this. But it's really important to know all the properties of parallelogram as we use them later on within the chapter and other shapes. So go ahead, and there are five different properties, and I just drew up a little bit of a parallelogram because we're going to draw on that and represent all the different properties that a parallelogram has. So, the first property you need to have memorized is that opposite sides are parallel, hence the term parallelogram, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and mark my two opposite sides that are parallel. Remember, parallel means um, we put the arrows. Now, since we have parallel, we're gonna have some different angle pairs within this uh, shape. Specifically, we use alternate interior angles that we'll find in our parallelogram, okay? Our second property is that opposite sides are also congruent. So they are parallel, but they are also equal, okay? So I'm gonna mark with our little dashes. The third property, now that we know all about the sides, we're gonna talk about the angles. We know that the opposite angles are gonna be congruent. So I'm gonna mark congruent, okay? That pair is opposite, congruent. This pair is opposite and congruent, okay? We do know another thing about the angles, because of the parallel, we have consecutive angles, okay? So we know that the same side interior or consecutive interior angles are supplementary, meaning that they're 180. So if you take a look up here, it's around, these two angles that are not congruent are gonna be 180. These two are same side, they're 180. Likewise, these two are gonna add up to equal 180, and the top two, which I'm running out of room, these two here would be 180, okay? So same side interior angles because of the parallel. Now, the last one, number five, deals with diagonals that are not drawn up there. We're gonna draw them. But we know that the diagonals bisect each other. So what that means is that when I draw on my diagonals, go ahead and draw them in green, okay? That means that this and this will be equal and then these two are, will be equal. If you notice, I'm not labeling all four of them the same because a parallelogram is kind of lopsided, right? It's kind of leaned over. Well, one diagram is way longer than the other, okay? But they are bisected, they intersect and bisect each other. So you need these five properties, you need to have them memorized. Parallelogram has five, when we move on, we have some shapes that will end up being 10 properties. So if you can remember these five for right now, it'll help you later on. And remember what it looks like. That's why I went ahead and drew up that pretty little parallelogram. So let's go ahead and put some numbers to these properties. Okay, here's the first one. The first one on the left gives you sides. So looking at X, remember, opposite sides are congruent. So we're gonna set those equal. 4X plus 10 should equal 2X plus 40. When you go through your math and your algebra, you should get x to equal 15. Same thing with your y. Your 3y minus 7 should equal 15. Opposite sides are congruent. Add the 7, 3y equals 22, and then divide by 3. Well, you can keep it as 22 over 3, or if you put it in decimal, it's about 7.3 repeating for y. So opposite sides are congruent. Let's take a look at the one on the right with angles, okay? Now, there are x's and y's, but we're gonna have to solve for x first since they give you two of them. So let's look at these relationships. These are opposite angles, and we know that opposite angles are congruent. So let's go ahead and set these equal. 2x plus 10 is equal to 3x. And we're gonna go ahead and solve. You get 10 is actually equal to x when you subtract the two. Now, for y, Okay. What you need to do is actually plug this x back in to either one. So 3 times 10 gives me the degree of this angle up here to be 30. Likewise, the degree of this angle down here is 30. Well, let's look at the relationship of our 2y and our 30. They are not opposite anymore, but they are same side interior. So we're going to set this equal to 180. So 2y plus 30 equals 180. Subtract the 30, you get 2y equals 150, and then we're going to go ahead and divide by 2, so you get y to equal 75. Okay? Is there anything else? 
are two more down here that we're going to take a look at, and they still deal with angles. Angles are really important. Now, on the bottom left, we threw in one diagonal. If you noticed, throwing in one diagonal creates a shape. That is a triangle. You will always use triangles within here, and we need to remember that a triangle equals 180. So you can actually add up 108 plus 31 plus y and set that equal to 180. <coughs> Excuse me, define y. And when you solve your equation, y will be 41. Okay, so that's the first one. Now, we can take a look at z down here. And I know that z is opposite of 108. So remember, opposite angles are congruent. So z is going to be 108. The last one, x, okay, let's refresh. We have parallel lines. So right now, if you remember back in congruent triangles, we trace our z. The z forms alternate interior angles. So we know alternate interior angles are congruent, therefore, 31 is going to be x. So you're going to have alternate interior angles all the time when you throw in the diagonal. Okay? Last one, we have an exterior angle of 132. So I'm going to do 180 minus 132 to get inside our triangle. That will leave me with 48. Okay? From here, what I would notice is we have the parallel, so I know I can move 51 up. And then from here, I've got my triangle, just like I did again. Um, in the prior example. So 51 plus x plus 48 should all equal 180 because it's a triangle. When you do your math, you should get x equal 81. All right, what I want you to do is pause and see if you can find all the angles on the insides, okay? All those little interior angles. All right, so let's see what you did. Here are the right answers. Now, these angles in the middle here, we use vertical angles, okay, that are equal. And then I know these two here are linear pairs, so I subtracted from 180. So that's not anything new, right? Then what I would have done is if you're given 40 here, you could put 40 down here because of alternate interior. Likewise, 60 here, 60 here, alternate interior. Now, what I would do is look for my triangles because I have 70 and 60, and to find the 50, you add up, and these should be 180, this should be 180, 180, and 180, because you have four different triangles there. So that's how I found my other angles of 30 and 50, by doing the triangles. Hope you did that right. All right, let's take a look at the diagonals. Okay, we're trying to find the length of AC. And remember, diagonals are bisected. So if they're bisected, I can set them equal. 2x plus 10 is equal to 3x minus 5. Okay? When we do our math, you should get x to equal 15. It actually wants the length of AC, which is the entire diagonal. So if I plug it back into 2 times 15 plus 10, I get the length of here is 40. That means this length is 40. If I want the entire diagonal length, AC, we do 40 plus 40 to give us 80 as the length of the diagonal. So make sure you're reading and not just always stopping at x. All right, sometimes they label angles with three letters, and we know how to label these angles. So RUS is this angle right here, which is 80. The second one they say is SQT, so I'm just going to outline S, Q, and T, so this is 30 degrees. And lastly, what we need to find our x is S, R, T. So that's X right there. So I'm going to erase all those colors, but I just wanted to highlight and we'll go ahead and look at what we're given. We have 80 here, X, and 30. Okay? What I would notice to do is, all right, so I've got two parts of this triangle. How can I get what this angle is up here? Well, I notice I'm given 30, which is alternate interior with the angle missing in the triangle. So now I have the three angles, X, plus 80 plus 30 and we know that a triangle is 180. So once you go ahead and solve that, you should get x to equal 70, which is what they want you to find, this angle up here. Alright, right, 6.3 talks about ways to prove that something is a parallelogram. The other problems, I was just telling you that a parallelogram is like music. Well, we're not using all four or all five properties. There are four ways to prove, and I'm going to draw each. So, 
if the only thing that's marked on the diagram has something like this, where the diagonals are labeled as bisected, you can absolutely say it's a parallelogram if that's the only thing marked. Okay, which is one of the properties. Next one, if on your diagram you have both pairs of opposite sides marked congruent, then that's a parallelogram. Number three, if both pairs of opposite angles are marked congruent, then that's the only thing marked congruent, then it's a parallelogram. And the fourth one I put a star and asterisk because it's not one of the properties. The first three are one of the properties, but number four combines a couple of them. It says if you have one pair of opposite sides, both congruent and parallel, if that's the only thing that's marked, Okay, then that's a quadrilateral. That quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So you just need to check those markings, and it has to um, be one of those four ways. All right, so we're going to see which value of x will make these quadrilaterals a parallelogram. The first one gives us angles that are not opposite but same side interior. So we should remember that 66 plus x should equal 180 because they're uh, consecutive interior angles. That means x needs to be 114 for that to be a parallelogram because they need to equal 180. Next, do the same thing where we have two angles. That means we need to add these up and equal them to 180 for the value of x to find that to make it a parallelogram. So when you go through all your math and combine like terms, 3x plus 30 equals 180, subtract the 30, divide by 3, you get x to equal 50. So if the x is 50, then that is a parallelogram. The last slide I want to talk about is a Venn diagram that we're going to continue to add to throughout the entire chapter. We're going to fill in two of the bubbles today that we've talked about. The first one is all of these are the quadrilaterals. So everything within these bubbles are four-sided figures. Okay, They have four sides and four angles. We've also learned that quadrilaterals, we know the angles are always going to equal 360 degrees. That's when we did the n minus 2 times 1 8. The other one is the parallelogram. So we've learned about that today. The parallelogram, okay, family is right inside that bubble. Now we're going to add on to this throughout the chapter and fill in the rest. And you know that there are five properties here. And we'll add on to the rest of the parallelogram family tomorrow.